Today in this video, we're going to be testing UV light to see how effective... Hang on a second. It's my friend. Gavin, how you doing, man? It's been a long time. Yeah, hey, I see my post on Facebook. Yeah, I, I just bought that business and it has been the most lucrative thing I have ever done. Yeah, I basically just buy junk cars and sell them for parts. Yep. Yeah, it's been really fun. Well, I, I can't really say it's been that fun, but it's it's been interesting. Let's put it that way. You you want to go out tonight and meet women? Uh, man, it's been a while since I've been out, and I, I, I don't know, man. <sighs> All right, yeah, I, I guess I don't, I don't got much else going on, so. Yeah, well, you know what? You know what I always say? I like my women like I like my cars. Full of gas and immobile. Okay, today in this video we're going to be testing out UVC light and comparing it to ozone to see which one is more effective as a disinfectant. Now we're not going to be doing anything with ozone in this particular video. I've already done two videos on that. They will be up here at the end of the video or in the video description. So in this video we're going to be using this 6 watt fluorescent tube quartz glass UVC light and we're going to be dirtying up this panel, basically just wetting my hands, touching a bunch of stuff around the house, and then lightly wetting them again and then touching each one of these panels to make sure they're evenly coated in germs. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to swab this panel before we do anything to it to see how much germs we have to start with, roughly, and then we're going to do a quick pass. Now, I need to mention here, if you are looking at UVC lights that you might find in like eBay or Amazon, and they're really cheap, and they're made with LEDs, a lot of those are made with LEDs that are not UVC light. UVC as a disinfectant is going to be way more effective than something like UVA or UVB, which is what most likely you're going to find as those cheap LED disinfectant lights that are used as, such as like wands. So most likely if it looks like a black light, it's not going to be UVC light and it's not going to do anything. So this here is an actual UVC germicidal bulb. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to kind of treat it like wand over on this panel. And people who buy the wands, they, they're just going to make a pass over maybe once or twice over an area and think it's disinfected. So we're going to see how effective that is just by making a quick pass over it. And then we're going to put this panel in a box for one minute with this light and five minutes with this light. And then we're going to compare the results. So we're going to come back after my hands are all germed up. Okay, I've got my hands all germed up. And all i got to do is touch all these panels. All right, so now that I've got my hands all washed, I've got everything set up here. I've got my boiled water, I've got my nutrient agar plates, and my sterile cotton swabs. And I'm gonna go ahead and swab the panel here where we're not using any UVC light on it whatsoever. And then I'm going to take this piece of cardboard, cover up these two panels, and I'm gonna make a pass with the UVC light over on this panel. Okay, just a few quick notes here because I know I'm going to get some comments if I don't mention this. I've already let the UVC light warm up for a couple minutes, so it's already at its max potential. I am wearing safety glasses, so it's not going to hurt my eyes. And I've also moved the nutrient agar plates out to a different area, so they're not going to be affected by the UVC light whatsoever. And also, this light does not produce ozone. So here's one pass. And here's the second pass. All right. All right, so what I decided to do is actually not use a box. Using a box isn't gonna make any difference unless they have reflective walls. So I decided just to set up this rack here and I put the uh, light about eight inches away from the panel. This is about the distance you'd be using this anyways for the area that it actually covers. This little tiny light is not for large rooms by any means, it's for uh, a very small cabinet use only. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this light on. We're gonna let it warm up for a few minutes and then I'm gonna move this piece of cardboard over the way and time this exactly at one minute.
Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other panel for five minutes, and then we're gonna come back and put them in my incubator. All right, so everything is all done, and this is my incubation box here. This is an inline thermostat. This is a heat mat in a box, and then inside here, I got my dishes, and they're sitting on top of a rack. And I got the temperature probe sitting on top of the rack as well uh, to maintain the temperature in here. This is gonna sit here for a couple days at around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I know I'm gonna get a couple questions or comments about I'm not using a control or something like that. The fact is that I've done this experiment, not this with the UVC, but several experiments with Petri dishes over uh, the past couple months. I haven't made videos on them necessarily, but uh, I've opened up the agar plates, exposed them to air. I've let them sit in the incubation chamber for a week at a time, exposed to air, and they didn't grow anything at all. I've also taken the cotton swabs that they come with. Uh, I've swabbed it without dipping it in water, and I've also swabbed it after dipping it in the boiled water, and also did not grow anything. So I've done a lot of controls with these. I know what I'm doing with this, uh, so there is no contamination. So we're gonna let these sit for a couple days, we'll come back. All right, these Petri dishes have now spent four days in the incubator, and these are the results. Or, wait a second. Okay, these are the results. So let's take a closer look here. Uh, this is the dish where we did not expose to the UVC light. You can see there's plenty of colonies growing on it. And this is where it gets interesting. This is the one where we did the quick pass, basically waving the wand over the surface in about one to two seconds time at about one to two inches away from the surface. You can see here there's a significant reduction even with that short exposure time. Over here, this is the one minute exposure at eight inches roughly from the surface. And between these two dishes, these are basically the same, which is very interesting. And we'll talk about that in just one second here. Over here is the five minute exposure at the same distance. And you can see we have one tiny little colony growing on there. And then over here is there's a little bit of mold and then there's a little tiny spot down here as well. Uh, this could have came from the air. It's, it's not abnormal to get a tiny little speck on these dishes sometimes with yeast that could just be floating around in the air. So I would call that, we'll just say 99.9% .9 st sterilization or effectiveness. These two dishes here is what we're gonna test in the next part of this video. So the reason why I believe we're seeing a, uh, the same result with these two is because you have to remember proximity matters with light sources. So on my channel, I do a lot of growing of plants inside my house with artificial lighting, and there's something called the inverse square law, and some, uh, some growers actually already know about this, but for the people who don't follow my channel, uh, what that basically means is that at a given distance away from an artificial light source, not the sun, that's a whole different thing, uh, if you double the distance away from the light source, you're not doubling the reduction in intensity, you're quadrupling the reduction in intensity. So this might have been here uh, two inches away from the surface. This is eight inches away from the surface. So that's a significant reduction. And that's why the amount of time it took uh, to get the same effectiveness over here is basically that what it is. So we got, you know, two seconds to 60 seconds. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to dirty up some new Petri dishes. I'm going to touch four different Petri dishes with my hands. And if you've seen a previous video of mine where I did that, you can see just how much stuff is on your hands. I'll uh, make sure that you, I'll link it up here at the end of the video. So basically, one of those dishes is going to be put in the incubator without being sterilized at all with UVC light. The other three are gonna be placed around the bathrooms. And we'll just run the light for roughly, uh, let's just say 20 minutes. Now we could figure out with the inverse square law uh, how long it would actually take to expose those to achieve something like this over here, or you know, 99 to 100% of uh, sterilization, we could actually figure out uh, how much time it would take to run that light at uh, you know, six or four feet away from the light. But the average person who buys something like this isn't going to try to figure that out. They're not gonna buy Petri just to know how effective it, it is. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a set time and we're gonna see if we achieve the same results as we saw here. And my guess is probably gonna be actually less effective. So we're gonna get on with that right now. All right, here's my four Petri dishes I'm gonna use. My hands have not been washed all day, so they're about as germed up as they can possibly be. So I'm just gonna open these up and touch each one of these evenly. All 
All right, now that those dishes are all germed up, I've hung this UVC light up on the ceiling area. This is actually a part of my studio rather than the bathroom. Uh, this is just as good a space as any. So I place these dishes at different spots, uh, different tiers. So I got basically the closest, the medium distance, and then the furthest distance, which is on the floor down there. And this business basically just to demonstrate proximity to the light and what somebody might do when they brought a UVC light home. Um, now, if you follow the directions, you're going to put this in a very small, like, cabinet size space, but the space doesn't really matter. So, so I'm talking about with the room. It doesn't matter how big the room is or anything like that. What matters is the proximity to the light. So if you're going to put this light close to something, that's what actually matters, not the size of the room that's actually in. So whatever you're trying to sterilize, that's the most important thing. But if somebody was to bring this home and, say, put it on their ceiling area, and put it in the bathroom or wherever and expect to sterilize something, this is gonna give you a demonstration of what happens at different proximities to the light. So what I'm gonna do here is actually, I'm just gonna open up these trays, or the Petri dishes. I'm gonna place the lids right next to there, upside down, just like this. And then that way, uh, the, lens, the lids and everything will be as sterilized as they possibly can be for the time I'm actually gonna run this, which will be about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna turn this light on and we'll come back in 20 minutes and put them in the incubator. All right, time is up. Let's take a look. There's the UV light. Let's go ahead and turn that off so I'm not uh, giving myself cataracts. So what I've actually decided to do is add on another dish, which is right up here at the top. Uh, so that gives me a fourth tier closest to the light there. Okay, I just plugged this in. All my dishes are inside. We'll close this up, come back in a couple days. All right, these dishes have spent a few days in the incubator and these are the results. Now, obviously everything's all labeled here, but we're gonna go over that real quick. It's very interesting. So all the way over here on the left-hand side, this is the control. Basically just touch it with my fingers, put it in the incubator, no UVC exposure. The next one over here is the one that was at the closest to the light on the top shelf, so 2.5 feet. And we're gonna circle back to that one in a second. The next one down, which was double the distance at five feet, that was the second shelf down. The next one over here, this was at 5.5 feet, that was sitting on a stool. And then the last one, this was on the floor at 7.5 feet from the light. Take a close look at this last one here. If we go all the way back over here to the control, you see how look, they look very, very similar. It's almost like it had no effect. Maybe a slight difference, go back to it. Not much though. So this is what I've kind of been alluding to uh, for a little bit here, and that is proximity and time is what matters the most when it comes to UVC exposure. So if we look at these two, the first one here, in the first part of this video, the first experiment where I swabbed the panel, after I exposed it for five minutes at eight inches from the panel, this is about the same effectiveness as we saw. Very, very similar. And I calculated what it would take to achieve uh, a similar effect at this distance here, at 2.5 feet, and it came out to be 17 minutes. And it looks very, very similar. I really like it when results play out like this. So the next one over here, this one was at double the distance. And based on the inverse square law, this would have taken 68 minutes of exposure to achieve the same level as that one at 2.5 feet. So looking at all these here, it's basically exactly what you would expect. It's a progressive increase in the amount of ba uh, bacterial colonies you see growing here because it's based off time and proximity. So if we were to expose this one here longer, the one that was on the floor, uh, I didn't calculate that, but I can guarantee you it would be <laughs> well over two hours to achieve the same effectiveness as we saw on this one. So I just thought that was really interesting uh, because this is... This is pretty much right up my alley when I'm talking about the inverse square law and artificial lighting for growing plants and doors. Uh, it, it basically is the exact same thing. The only difference is we're not dealing with plants, we're dealing with bacteria, and we want the opposite effect, meaning that we want, to, we want the light to basically kill stuff instead of make stuff grow. Well, that was definitely interesting, and we finally reached the part in the video where I talk about UVC light versus ozone. So congratulations if you made it this far in the video. Thank you for watching thus far. So UVC light, is it effective? It is absolutely very effective. And as a matter of fact, it's actually, from what I found, more effective than ozone. However, there is another thing, another aspect to this, and that's efficiency. So although UV light is very effective, it's not as efficient as something like ozone. Uh, so as you've seen here in this video, the power of the light and the time it, it's exposed to and the proximity and everything all play into this. And that has to do with, that ties into the efficiency. So if it's close enough, if it's powerful enough, and it's exposed for a long enough time, it's extremely effective. 
but it's not efficient if you compare it to ozone because if you take an ozone generator like this one, put it in a, a, in a room, uh, a bedroom, bathroom, whatever it might be, you only have to run it for a relatively short amount of time, 15, 20 minutes, something like that, and it's going to sanitize that entire room and it's gonna be much more efficient because it's gonna get into all the nooks and crannies of every spot in that room because it's a gas, basically. So UV light, if you were to put it somewhere in a spot, let's just say, for instance, you put the UV light here, the surface that's in the shadow of this ozone generator, it could be anything you can think of that's in a room, if it's in the shadows, it's not gonna be sterilized. So basically, if the germ does not have direct line of sight to the light, the ozone or the UVC light, it's not going to be sterilized. So that's the case where ozone comes in and you don't have to move this around in the room, you just run this and then and you're done. With the UVC light, you'd actually have to go in that room, move it around to different positions for a certain amount of time to make sure you cover all of those shadows. So ozone, more efficient, maybe less effective. UVC light, definitely very effective, but less efficient. And you also have to be careful with either one of those things. So the ozone generator here or the UVC light, obviously they both have their things where you have to consider safety. So UVC light, you wanna make sure you're wearing glasses. It could be any glass, it could be acrylic, polycarbonate safety glasses, whatever it might be, because UVC light doesn't penetrate those. Even if it's clear, it doesn't matter, it doesn't go through. Uh, ozone, you basically just have, to, just have to stay out of the room while it's running and for many hours after that until the ozone dissipates. Um, also, with UVC light, you can't be in the room anyways, even if you were wearing, were wearing safety glasses because of your skin exposure. Um, your skin can handle a, a little bit of UV, UVC light, but obviously you don't want to have it for a prolonged period. So either way, if you use an ozone generator or a UVC light, you don't, you don't want to be in that room, just plain and simple. So if you're interested in anything you saw here in this video, uh, the Petri dishes, uh, the inline thermostat, the heat mat, um, anything like that, you want to do the experiment yourself, even the ozone generator, maybe you want to buy that. The links will be in the video description below. They will be affiliate links. I do get a small commission if you use those links, but it doesn't increase the price at all. And a lot of that uh, commission goes right back into the, my channel. So if you haven't seen the ozone generator video, I'm going to link it to this video, uh, either at the end of the video up here or in the description. Make sure you watch that to understand kind of what I was talking about here. So that's it for this video, and thanks for watching.